Greetings folks. This video is all about a whole lot of new gear from FlySky. I'm a big fan of FlySky. For years I've been recommending the FlySky FSI 6 as the best beginner's uh, programmable radio. It's sort of the ch one of the cheapest radios around and, and punches way above its weight for range. Uh, limited features but programmable. And there are quite a few prominent YouTubers for which this is their only radio. It does just about everything you need to do. Anyway, let's look at the new stuff. This is a new era for Flysky. Uh, they've really sort of drawn the line under what they've done so far and they're starting again. A new protocol, it's the AFHDS 3 protocol. Uh, the FSI 6 works on the AFHDS 2A protocol, so it's a new protocol. It's uh, not compatible with AFHDS 2 as it is, but uh, you can add a uh, JR module to give backward compatibility. But anyway, this is the Paladin PL18 uh, radio, top of the range flagship model for FlySky. They put a lot of work into it and come up with a really, really interesting radio. Not perfect by any means, as no radio is. There are some uh, strange design decisions, which we'll talk about later on, but it is a high quality radio with stunning range, absolutely stunning range. We also have uh, a long range module. This is a 2.4 gigahertz module. The FRM302 uh, goes up to two watts of power. Um, and you'd wanna make sure you're out flying by yourself because you'd, you'd make everyone crash if you started transmitting on 2.4 at uh, two watts. Long range module, uh, long range antenna. Uh, JR module adapter because the PL18 doesn't have a standard JR bay. Uh, and uh, we have a few receivers too. We've got the FTR8B receiver and there's a couple of receivers included with the PL18. And we have a, um, a wireless charger as well. All right, let's open it up, have a look. Now, a couple of very respected YouTubers, friends of mine, uh, Roland from Dutch RC and uh, Keith from Bonafide Pirate have done extensive reviews and videos on this radio, so I would I'd really recommend you go and check them out. Uh, they already know a way, way more than I do about this radio, and there's an extensive thread on RC groups as well. So, as always, uh, don't rely on just one review. Have a look at them all, read the threads on RC groups, and make up your own mind. So let's open it up, and in, while we're doing this, we can uh, talk about some of the specs. So it's an 18-channel radio, runs on the AF-HDS3 protocol, uh, has a touchscreen, metal hall sensor gimbals, nicely packaged there, there's even a, a mat for uh, mucking around with it, stickers, nice padding, it's all operated by touchscreen and it has a uh, sunscreen as well. Let's pull it out. Quick start guide, some more goodies in there. You have a choice of thick grips and thin grips. Already has the thin grips on, uh, but you can change to thicker grips if you want to. I quite like the feel of the thin grips actually. It has inbuilt dual antennas which are in this area here and I'll just take the uh, screen off for the moment it has an incredible amount of switches and dials some wonderful sliders on the side which is very significant for me very important to have good sliders on a radio for my use and these are about the best that I've ever seen with the uh, front and back knobs and a uh, nice sort of firm ratchet feel to it we have six switches, uh, two position, momentary, two, two position, three position, three position and three position there. We have two push-push buttons there. We have uh, the two sliders and the three variable resistors. And we have eight trims as well, as well as the really nice feeling hall sensor gimbals. Now let's turn it over. There's the uh, included FRM uh, 301 2.4 gigahertz module. 
and you can see that's a smaller size module so uh, it's not going to fit JR as it is but you can get a, a sort of a bolt-on JR module adapter. The gimbals can be uh, adjusted via the screw holes here centering or not self-centering you can change mode from mode one to mode two you can change the tension on the springs you also get two sets of springs you get sort of soft springs and hard springs that you can put on your gimbals to get it exactly the way you want it uh, it has a little plate here that you can pull off that just sort of protects it i guess as you can see there's no battery bay because it has a built-in battery and that's one of the kind of controversial things in my books uh, it has a built-in 4300 milliamp hour 1s battery and they say it can be operated for eight hours uh, before needing recharging, which is pretty good, actually. Um, I'm used to transmitters that you can change the battery out in the field. Uh, this one, you can't change the battery out in the field. Uh, you can recharge it, of course. They actually sell as an option this wireless recharging unit. So you could conceivably have a battery bank out in the field and... Uh, pop it on there and recharge it out in the field while you're not using it. But uh, yeah, having a, a non-changeable battery is, is kind of a controversial idea, I think. Don't know if I like it yet. It may work perfectly well. Uh, and this area here is the wireless charging area. So that sort of uh, USB cable and uh, just charges while it's sitting there. Interesting idea. I don't know if I like it yet. And we have a spot for a Bluetooth module, which doesn't exist yet, I don't think. USB charging and it uh, looks like a trainer port as well there. So let's turn it on, hold the two buttons down. And this is something I really like. Can you see it? When you turn it on, you get the option of transmitting or not transmitting. So you, you can operate it or you can set it up without having the RF module turned on, which is a great idea because whenever I'm operating the radio inside my house, I knock out my internet network. So uh, having the not transmit option is fantastic. It has this coloured light here, which I don't like at all. Uh, you have no control over it. It just cycles through different colours, and that is just a in poor taste, I think. It's, it doesn't belong on a serious radio like this. Now, the range of this radio is marketed as up to 3.5 kilometres stock as it is, which is pretty incredible. And with the long-range 2.4 module... Uh, the range is stated as up to 50 kilometres, which is mind-blowing, really. But to have a stock radio that, that uh, can go 3.5 kilometres is just amazing. Even the old uh, i6S could go 2 kilometres, um, so they are a company that produces long-range radios. Now, there are a couple of things that I don't like at all, uh, and... If we look at if we look at the models, select model, we only get 20 model slots. There is no SD card to store the models on. You have to connect it to a computer to uh, offload the models or load new models if you have a, a big collection of them. In my existing radios, I have probably 55 models set up, so the 20 model limit uh, would be no good for me. Also, you can connect it to a computer to offload models and uh, do updates and things like that, but only Windows. It's not Mac compatible at this stage, which is another uh, killer for me, I'm afraid. It is quite a hefty radio. Uh, it weighs about just under a kilogram, which is probably, what, about 200 grams heavier than the Tyrannus radios or 100 grams or so does feel kind of weighty it doesn't come with an neck strap either which is a, a bit of an oversight surely they want to give you a, a fly sky branded neck strap just for extra marketing extra advertising however it does feel very very nice in the hands all the switches knobs dials uh, they all feel very very high quality the touchscreen actually works very well. I was a bit sceptical about a touchscreen, uh, but that's the only way you can operate it, and it, it, it certainly works nicely. It's quite intuitive. The operating system is very, very powerful. 
uh, and very configurable as well. All right, so also in the stock set, we get the charging cable, which is a um, micro USB. Now the charging point on top of the radio is quite awkward to get the cable into. Bluetooth, there it is there. You sort of have to come in from this direction here to plug it in, which is just, just poor design, I think. Uh, it needs to be a straight plug coming straight down, but they're easy enough to come by anyway. Not a big thing, but uh, they really need to think about those things. It comes with a couple of receivers. We have the FDR16S uh, non-PWM receiver for quads and uh, flight control boards. Uh, TR10 10 channel receiver for normal PWM flying, also has IBUS, SBUS, all those serial protocols. We've got some spare switches there, very nice touch. Uh, some alternative stick ends, and we get the soft springs and the heavier springs for the gimbals. All very nice touches. And they all come standard with the radio. So let's have a look at the screen now. We get uh, sensors. There are a good selection of sensors from FlySky, including altitude, uh, voltage, uh, RPMs, temperature. Uh, I think that's about it, maybe. Uh, I don't think that they have a, a proper Vario with the beepy beeps, but um, they certainly have altitude. Select the models. You can set up the model here. Uh, the number of engines, the number of ailerons, flaps actually actually i don't think we can choose any more than one engine or one motor which needs to be updated in future firmware i'm sure uh, you choose ailerons flaps one two zero flaps one aileron channel two aileron channels etc let's keep it simple spoilers elevator rudder sensors your sensors will show up here of course uh, timers to set up as well, reset timers, all that sort of stuff. As I said, it is incredibly powerful. All right, so let's go in. Uh, we've got a voltage, uh, we've got a transmitter battery setting up there. Um, so we can reverse channels there, all the way down, nice and simple. Endpoints, sub trim, and trims. You can assign which trims do what. Uh, assign trims to channels. As I said, we have, have eight trim buttons. Expo, and uh, I think we get Expo on rates as well here. Rates and Expo. Separate screen to set up that, which is cool. Throttle curve, throttle down. This is where I've set up a throttle uh, cut switch on uh, the top right switch, whatever that is. I don't know what they're called yet. Uh, very easy to set up there. Very essential, first thing you want to do. Offset channels, uh, delay setup, you can uh, enter delay for uh, conditions. Conditions are like uh, flight modes, I guess. Channels, say, say you're putting the flaps down, you might want to uh, delay the flaps going down. Where are my flaps? I probably took them off, did I? You can delay functions, channels, and uh, conditions, which is pretty cool. Mixes, you have stacks and stacks of mixes. Linear mixes, we get, uh, I think, 20 linear mixes, which is plenty. Curves, we get five curve mixes. And you get a, a few uh, preset ones as well. Aileron to rudder, rudder to aileron, aileron to elevator. If there was flaps there, that would flaps would uh, appear there as well. Next screen, conditions are like uh, flight modes. Uh, you can define different flight modes and set up mixes and trims for each flight mode. Not something I use a lot. Logic switches, you can set up three more switches uh, that rely on a combination of other switches. And you have AND, OR, or XOR. Two switches on, one switch on, and the other one off, or something like that. They're just more options uh, for more advanced programming. Airplane structure, here's where you tell it uh, what you have on your, your plane. If I include flaps, then that will in, uh, appear in the mixes and uh, channels and things like that as well. Timers, here you can set up all your different timers and sound prompts. I haven't uh, played with that yet. Don't use timers very much myself. Trainer mode, auxiliary channels, here you can set up all your different auxiliary channels. 
on uh, different switches and you can just select which switch you want to uh, control the channel. Very easy and powerful. And here you can assign channels to different functions or functions to channels. Much more open than the original um, i6s for sure. And important screen this one, this displays all the servos uh, and as a setup thing you can uh, set up a sort of swipe functions to make different uh, different screens appear and I'm always wanting to look at the display so I've got a down swipe for the channel display, very useful indeed. And last screen, set up the models, uh, receiver setup, actually we'll go through models as well. Uh, you can type in the name. Select the model, select the type, endpoints, subtrims, all that sort of stuff that you want. There we go. Oh, delta wing, there we go. That's the uh, Elevon mixing, specific glider mixing as well. You can copy and paste models, import and export models, all very powerful stuff. Just a pity they can't do it on an SD card in the transmitter. Uh, receiver setup, binder receiver, fail safe. We get all the usual good options, all the hold and no pulse options. Receiver protocol, IBUS, SBUS, PPM, range test, uh, configure, IBUS setup, receiver, monitor, uh, low signal and uh, low signal alarm, servo frequency, <coughs> you can change, uh, if you've got digital servos you can increase the frequency or you can put in a custom frequency as well, um, you, you just leave it on 50 hertz for normal planes, updates and information. Sensors, this is where you show and configure sensors and system, uh, language, units, sound. I had the sound turned off at the moment because it, it was irritating me a bit. There is a bit too much uh, sound on. Let's put the sound on so you can hear it. Haptic vibration, or yeah, very good. Uh, backlight turn, timeout, you can increase the brightness of this screen here. This is the home screen quick access. I've got the um, swipe down is the display servos. You can set up all the different setups here. I'm going to put models in for, what's that one? Swipe up, that's a good idea. Standby timeout, you can set that up. Set up the switches. Like that, all very impressive. Stick mode, change from mode one, mode two, mode three, mode four. You can do all of that using the screws on the back as well to uh, engage or disengage the springs. Calibration. Uh, no, don't want to do that. Factory reset. Uh, firmware update and about. And this firmware is uh, 1.0.40. So there's a lot to learn, uh, but it's quite intuitive and uh, you can set up a model quite easily which uh, I might do soon and we'll go out for a fly just to see how it feels actually using it in the hand. I think it's going to feel very, very nice. So let's have a look at the included receivers now. Here's the um, IBUS or PPM protocol, maybe even SBUS 2, I think. Super lightweight and small for mini quads and small planes and uh, flight control boards. The FTR16S. 16 channel ppm ibus range more than a kilometer weight two grams and you can see it hasn't been wired up yet so uh, i need to wire it up shows you the wiring here and here's the ftr 10 which is the uh, 10 channel pwm receiver as well as uh, ibus s bus i believe and ppm Needs a bind plug to bind this one. They should; These two receivers should be pre-bound to the transmitter. Range, I believe, up to three and a half kilometres. And here we have the FTR8B. This one doesn't come with a uh, receiver. You have to buy this separately. Eight channel PWM also does PPM. IBUS, SBUS, of course. And we get some extra wiring there as well. And now let's have a look at the... Uh, JR module adapter. So this needs to be screwed into the back of the radio. Uh, what we do is undo these two bolts, 
take that off, pop out this module, screw this module on, and then we can add the FRM302 module, the long range module. So the long range module, here we go. FM FRM302 comes uh, preset at 100 milliwatts to be legal uh, to bump it up above that to 500 one watt or two watts uh, you need to download some firmware from FR Sky, so the developer firmware in the uh, downloads for this module uh, and then you can bump it up to uh, above 100 milliwatts if you're using it above 100 milliwatts you need to power it externally XT30 plug there and you can turn the internal and external power off if you're going to go for, if you're going to buy this and use it for long range this of course can be used in other radios as well it's just a standard uh, JR module yeah but I guess if you're going to use it for long range you are going to want external power and uh, flick it that way so that you can use more power as long as you're not going to take all your friends out of the sky of course comes with a normal rubber ducky uh, antenna but you can also buy this optional long range antenna as well so there you go lots of good gear um, so what we need to do now is make up a model bind it go for a fly and test out how it feels thanks for watching